We're learning the first Gemara on the Mishnah that discussed making brachas on fruit. The Gemara says, Nina Hanimili. That's a question. From where do we know these words? Let's write here. Hanimili. Put this in a little space. Hani Mili. And honey means these, and mealy means words, and mina means from where. So from where are these words? The Gemara says, the Tanu Rabbanon, the rabbis taught. Let's put these together so we know to read it together. Kodeshilu lema Hashem, it is holy, it is praises for Hashem, and we're talking about the fruits of the fourth year. That means the first three years, it's Arla. And in the fourth year, it is holy, it is praises for Hashem. You know, you have to bring the fruits to Yerushalayim. Melamed. We'll put the, oops, we'll put the lines in between. Kodesh Elul Mashem. You read that together. Melamed, this teaches us. Shetu'unim bracha, that they require a blessing. Lefnei malachrayim. Fruits of the fourth year require a blessing before and after. Okay. Uh, that would be a source for brachas on the fruits of the fourth year. They're praises for Hashem, and Hilulim is a double expression. It's a plural. The Yud Mem is a plural. That would mean two praises. That means a blessing before and a blessing after. Mikan, from here. Amar Rabbi Akiva. We'll put that together. Amar Rabbi Akiva. Let's write Rabbi Akiva out. So we... That's Rabbi and Akiva. Spell Akiva with an Aleph. Asr, Rabbi Kiva, uh, Rabbi Kiva says, Asr la Adam, it's forbidden for a man, Sheyitaim klum, that he should taste anything, Kaidem Sheyivarich, before he says a bracha. So not only Netaravai, not only the fruits of the fourth year, but anytime someone eats, he needs to say a bracha. Now the Gemara has a question. That's, we've already done our answer. The Gemara asks, Vahai, which means in this, Kaidesh Hilulim. Lahachi, oh, we'll have to uh, take out. Um, I don't want to read too many words at once. Vahai Kaidash Hilulim. In this pasuk of Kaidash Hilulim, we'll put it in quotes so you know to say it like that. Lahachi Hudasa. For this, it is coming. Asa means to come. This is, uh, Kaidash Hilulim is teaching me brachas. Hai. This, mi ba'ile, this is needed. Let's put it together. Chad, one of the hilulims, because we said it is hilulim, which is a plural. So chad, one of them, chad is like a chad. The amarachmana, that the merciful one says, which of course means Hashem in the Torah. Achle v'hadar achle. Now if you notice, there's a ches there, and here's a chaf, so it's sort of like a play on words. Uh, let's get rid of that extra one. And let's do Vahadar Achle. Achle means you can redeem it. Vahadar, in return, Achle and eat it. It means that you don't have to take the actual fruits to Yerushalayim. You can redeem it. Chulin. The Gemara is learning that the word Hilulim and Chilul is similar. So you redeem it and then you can eat it. So the Hilulim is, the first thing it's teaching me is that you can redeem it. Redemption means that you. Uh, take money to Israel instead. The Idach, the other Hilulim, because we had two. Davar Hata'un Shira. That means something that requires song. Ta'un Chilul requires redemption. We'll see in a minute what requires song. That means that the laws of Netaravai are only applicable to the to those fruits that require song. And Mishainai. Ta'un shira, if it doesn't require song. Ein ta'un chilol, it does not require redemption. And uke de Reb Shmuel bar Nachmeni Amar Rabbi Yenison, let's just put that. And Reb Shmuel bar Nachmeni says in the name of Rabbi Yenison. Okay. The Amar Reb Shmuel bar Nachmeni Amar Rabbi Yenison, that Reb Shmuel bar Nachmeni, the son of, Reb Shmuel, the son of Nachmeni, says in the name of Rabbi Yenison. What does he say? Let's take this up a drop. He says, Minayin, from where do we know? She'ein, Oimrim, 
Shira that we do not say song. What that really means is that we don't sing a song. El alayayin, only on wine. We're talking about the Levium that would sing during the Karbanas and the Beis Amigdash, and they would sing not during the slaughtering, um, uh, not during the, a- anything that uh, was done on the Mizbeach, except for the pouring of the wine of the, on the Mizbeach, the Levium. This uh, Rashi learns is slightly different. Um, when the, would the Levium sing, that's only w- during the pouring of the wine. Shinyamar, as it says, Vatayim hagefen. The vine said to them, there's a story in the book of Shaftim, one of the sons of Gidon killed out his, all his brothers, and this people of Shechem are giving him this parable of from the different trees that are going to rule. And the vine, which they offered to be the rule, the vine t- says, Hechedalti esti roishi. Hechedalti means, shall I forsake? Shall I give up? Esti roishi. Tiroshi is mine, like Tirish v'yitzar. Hamesameach that rejoices, that, that gladdens, elikim va'anashim. Let's put all of this in a quote, because this is one long pasuk. Shall I give up my wine? This is the vine talking. The vine says, shall I give up my wine that gladdens God and man? The Gemara says, im anashim misameach. This is rather Reb Shmuel bar Nachmini saying in the name of If it gladdens man that we know, Alcoholic content, what can gladden man? But Elikim, Bima Mesameach, how does it gladden God? Mikan, from here we learn, She'ein Oimrim Shira, that we do not say a song or sing a song, Ella only Al Hayayin, only over wine. And in summary, what we've just learned is that Kodesh Ilulim La Hashem is actually teaching me two other things. First is that first you redeem it and then you can eat it, the fruits, bef- without even taking it to your shalayim. And the second thing it's teaching me is that the laws of Netaravai are actually only applicable to a vine, to grapes. They're not applicable to all other trees. Once I've used up the two hilulim, I, then I can't learn brachas from Kodesh Hilulim Lashem.